Good day everybody and welcome back. The mission I got this week is to build a ISO 30 or NT30 taper to suit the 50mm face mill. My plan for this is to build this end first to hold the face mill. Once that's done, put the arbor on it. So I've got a bit of material chucked up, it's a piece of shaft I had here. But anyway, just got to make it happen. And hopefully it'll all work out alright and run concentric. So here we go. So this shaft here, yeah, it's 47.95, this 30 taper. Yeah, it's going to be a fraction smaller, but it's not going to hurt a thing. So I just want to clean up the outside right down to the jaws here. And then I'll start by machining the end down to 22 mil. Pretty crap finish. Better try something a bit better than that. Turned out all right, eh? That was a point, point 0.1 depth of cut. <laughs> 21 and a half mil from this face. Got to come in and bring it down to 22 mil. The bore on the uh, face mill measures 22.03. This is measuring 22.53, so we've got half a mil to come off. I'm going to flick that inset around, try and find a better edge. I've run out of them, so I'll try and pick the best of the best of the worn outs. That's 22.02. By the time I can just polish that a little bit. Twenty two point oh one. So in theory it should fit. The famous last words. It's a bit of a polish. So I just gave that a bit of a polish. That fits on nice. Goes hard up against the back here. There's a little chamfer. But that's... 
I like that. Pretty happy with that, eh? That's good. That'll do it. Okay. 8.5 for an M10. Gonna shoot it up about 30 mil. So I've got a brand new UFS M10 Spora flute tap. We'll power tap it and see how it goes. Pretty good to me. Just gonna have a bit of a clean up before I go any further. Right here, I've spopped it all around and put in a collar chuck holding onto that 22mm arbor or the 22mm in. And just out of curiosity, I thought I'd put an indicator on it to see what it was doing. 0.01. I'm pretty happy with that. This gauge is absolutely beautiful. I really like it. I just got to get a proper base for it. It's one of them cheap import ones that you got to sort of do them up with a pair of Stilsons to get them to hold somewhere good, but it'll do for now. So I'm going to run a center on this one while I cut the tape and all that. I know it's going to be a bit of a pain. I'm going to have to have a fair bit of tool stick out, I reckon. Rightio, <clears throat> from this face, got to go back 70 mil and take it down to 31.75, which is inch and a quarter. Then I've got to put the taper on it then. So, start turning. Rightio, so that's at 32 and a half or just under. It's all got to cool down before I can take a final measurement. I still haven't fixed a coolant pump. So the end of it has to come down to 17 mil, 18 mil along. So I'm going to get, I won't quite get the whole lot of it because the tool's going to clash onto here, but I can bulk most of it out.
I'm going to have to change over to this tool. Um, that'll let, give me clearance to get in and I'll also use that one to do the taper. So I'm going to let this all cool down because it's raging hot and go and have a cup of tea, jump on the internet and work out the angle. I know it's 7 in 24 um, but I want to work that out in a decimal so I can use a sine bar and gauge blocks to set the compound to the correct angle. So I'm using a 4 inch sine bar and I've got metric gauge blocks. So 4 inches is 101.6 millimetres. If you Google 7 in 24 taper as a decimal, it comes back at the half angle of 8.2971 degrees. I use the Carbide Depot cal uh, trigonometry calculator. So all I done was angle A as I put in the 8.2971 and side C is 100.60 hit the calculate and it tells you that A which is a gauge block stack height you need is 14.66 millimeters I'd be stuffed without this because me and mathematics ain't good friends so I've got the gauge block set out the way I normally do it is I put in the 14.66 like for this one same as I do on all of them and then I divide it down, so the 6.6, I've got a 1.06, so I just subtract the 1.06, which gives you 13.6, then I take the 1, so then I put a 1.6 in there, so I subtract 1.6, oops, that gives me 12, left to try and gather, so just a 10 and a 2. That's the way I normally do it. It's easier than trying to add it up in my head, which is like a maze in there. It's not real good. <laughs> Once I've got them rank, rock, got them to stack height together, I always, for some reason, I don't know why I do it, because I don't trust me adding up or my calculator driving. But I always check it with a mic as well. Just double, yeah, double check myself. And it's a good way to check the mic too. Radio, so this has to come down to 17.4. It's had a long time to cool down. That's at 18, so 0 0.6 to come off there. And this has to come down to the final dimension, uh, down to inch and a quarter. finish and I overshot it by 0 0.02 oh, yeah. screwed that up didn't I anyhow so we have 32.44 Definitely on it. Yep. Yeah, I was right. Okay, now I can set the compound to cut the taper. Okay, time to set the sign bar up. I use a magnet. Just stick it there and then stick the gauge blocks on that so there's less chance of dropping your gauge blocks. That's what I found anyway because I am clumsy. Okay, I'm 
I'm not too sure if you guys can see the indicator there or not. Got it pretty bloody close. Hopefully that's not going to glare out on yous. Right, so that was good enough. Got a bit of tool stick out because the angle of the compound and I still want to retain that tailstock support. And it's going to get tight when I get down towards the bottom, but it is what it is. So basically, got to turn the angle on it until I touch up at this end here, or as good as meet this end. Which hopefully, if I've done everything right, it should finish here as well. I'll turn that insert. Okay, I did screw up there. I'm going to have to put this out a fraction more. Give me a little bit more room on the um, hand belt. Something else I didn't do. I didn't put this little relief in here before I started the taper. I just meant to go in the back here. So this get this to match up with this end here it's actually going to dig in a fraction It's not looking too bad. Okay, I'm going to leave the taper there. I'm going to come in with this tool, square it up. Like so. These guys can't see. I'm just going to do that little flat in there. Attempt to anyway. That is it. That polished up pretty nice. That bit of polish and that just sort of rounded them edges off nice. Okay, got to drill and tap it now. There we go, I'm going to tap this half 13. About 30 mil deep.
I've got a spiral flute tap and I'll tap, power tap it. Many thanks to Tom in America for sending this tap. That is pretty much all the lathe work complete. Okay, one more little thing here. So the end of the other arbor, they got a little relief in the end. Well, I stuck that drill in there, but I'm not happy with the finish. Even though you're not going to see it, it just annoys me. So, just going to clean it up. I feel better now. Well, it officially can come out now. I've stopped stuffing around with it. I gave it a little bit of a, another bit of a polish up with some Scotch Bright, and I'm pretty confident it's going to fit nice. So. Well, as you probably noticed in the previous footage, you'll notice uh, Cincinnati's missing the VFD. Um, that mill's out of action at the moment, um, only because the VFD is missing. I've had to use the VFD on another machine. So this is what the VFD is currently on. Now this is a 1980 model first milling machine. It was a one owner machine. It was owned by a guy who had a factory and his hobby was race cars. He had this machine that he bought new and a tighter lathe. Age caught up with him and he decided to get out of the hobby and he sold up all his gear. Uh, this is in really, really good order. All bar the quill has one little tight spot towards the top which I've got to try and sort out but I'm trying to find a manual on it it's got no coolant pump it has no DRO it has had one fitted in the past so I'm not too sure of the story on that but no DRO and the power feed unit on the side is a survey brand or type 70 and that's the gear out of it as you can see it needs a bit of dental work now I, for the life of me, I cannot find this gear on the internet. This measures 90 mil across the diameter. Every one of them found is 92, 94 mil. I cannot find a 90 tooth gear, a uh, 90 mil diameter gear. I've emailed Servo in California, and they haven't responded to the email. So if anyone knows where I can get a manual for the type 70 and a part number or where i can actually get this gear please let me know um, i also have to get a transformer for it as well to reduce it back to the 110 volt so this is sort of an upgrade to the cincinnati the long time viewers will always know that i'm i'm fighting for z height and my intentions were to put that back as a horizontal mill between the two of them I've filled a big void in what I've wanted to do here. It would have been lovely to have a brand new machine. If you remember that photo or that picture the, the wife got me for Christmas of that milling machine, that's 16 grand. I had to do a fair bit of higgling, yeah, fair bit of jiggling around to get this one. So I've sold a fair bit of stuff I had laying around. Things I haven't used for a while, they've all gone, but it's here now and hopefully it's going to serve me well so looking at the table i've also got to put a work light on it too work light it's got a little mark in the table here and on the back of one t-slot oh yeah camera's going to pick it up it's got a little mark in it there and just your common things on the table but as far as wear it's got absolute minimal minimal wear and original paint so you can see it's been well looked after not a variable speed head it's only the belt belt change head but it's going to do me only problem is which i'll show you is now okay the quill it'll come to there then it gets a little bit it's got a tight spot from there to there 
So if someone can open up any ideas why it's like that, and I wouldn't mind guessing it's going to need a set of headstock bearings at some stage. I'd like to replace them just so I know they're right. Is a tiny bit of noise in the bearings, but I'd like to get the, the spindle out and have a look at them bearings regardless. Probably do an adjustment. I need to get a manual on this, on the head. So if anyone has a information on the first milling machine, it's an LC one and a half TM. So if anyone's got any information on it or can lead me in the right place for information on it, please yeah, let me know in the comments or send me an email, emails in the um, description. But it's going to be so nice to have a quill. It's something I've missed. Even though I hated that mill drill, it's something I've missed is having a quill. But as far as the auto feeds, everything works, everything works fine. It's just that bloody, that little tight spot in the quill. But anyway, that's the new mill. So yeah, if any of you guys have got information or a manual on these, this head, please, if you want to share it, share it my way, because it's, I know they're, they're similar to a bridge port, or probably the same, I don't know 100% sure if they are the same. So I don't want to start pulling it apart and screw something up. I'd like, like a manual or a, some diagrams to, to show me what I'm doing as I go. Okay, there's a bit of background noise there, cutting the tree down sort of around the corner there. You've got the chipper going and falling the tree. So I'm gonna start off putting these slots in on this side, they're the five eight wide for the dogs on the quill, the drive dogs. So I've got it in a square collar box so I can index it 180. Once I do that, then I'll come up with another setup to index at 90 degrees to put the slots in for the um, drive dogs of the face mill. Let's go back to basics now. Sort of got used to having a DRO, so I'm a Cincinnati, but that's no more. Shift over 23.84, which is half that diameter. And I can put a 5.8 cutter up then and put the slots in. Another thing with this mill, I can't believe how light the knee is to wind up and down compared to that thing, the Cincinnati. <laughs> and that's like, yeah, it's like lifting the ute up. Okay, I don't know how this machine's gonna go for vibration through the camera or anything like that. This is the first time I've filmed on it. So it's just trial and error. 5-8 um, cutter, I'm going to have to shift over each way at fraction. I'm just going to do the adjustments with the knee, because that's what I'm used to. These slots have to go down until it touches the taper, basically. Certainly back to basics when you're playing with hand wheels again. I've done it for years on the lathe, I've done it for ages on the Cincinnati. <laughs> I thought I'll never have to do that again. Probably not the sharpest of cutters anyway. Don't think that cutter's real sharp either. And you can hear that bit of noise in the I don't know whether it's just the quill needs adjusting the bearings, I don't know, anyway.
Okay, I've just worked out what I need to offset each side, so 0 0.68. Shattering. So now I have to go back 0.68 the other way. Right, yeah, that's that side done. I'll get it break this down, turn it over and repeat this again. Well we're all set up again as you can see it's all reading zero and the table is reading zero so everything's all sweet as a nut. I certainly reckon them headstock bearings or those spindle bearings need attention pretty bad. Which is part and parcel of it. But anyway, I've got to reset this up again now to put some slots 90 degrees to these. Um, 10 mil wide I think they are for the dogs for the face mill. Okay, this is the setup I come up with. To square it up so it's these next two slots are 90 degrees I just used a square squared up on these two faces here plenty good enough to see what happens pretty much here I'm gonna roll so I haven't got very many good 10 mil cutters so I'll pick the best of what I've got And that one's absolutely sh so I better find something else. Okay, I found an 8mm one that should do the job, I just have to widen it out later. So I'm going to go in 14.5mm from this face, or probably 15mm. See how this goes. I think I screwed up. Well, I did screw up there. I wasn't meant to go right down to that spigot, but I did. Oh, these are just going to be inset. It's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> I've, got to I've got to open this up to 10 mil now. Okay, I've measured that hole and I've shifted over 0.94. Okay, now I've got to go back the other way. Okay, so that fits quite good actually. It's just a shame that I went too deep. Makes it unique, doesn't it? So it has to be drilled and tapped now too. I'll do that before I change or turn it over. That's it. Right there. So I'll drill that and tap it M5. So 
it was easy to break through into that center hole I just hope there's not going to be a problem with that long bolt that goes in the end I'm going to do the rest off camera it's only a matter of doing this slot again on the other side so I'll get that done and I'll bring you back okay that one's machined out and drilled and tapped so this can all come apart now and see if we were actually successful or not that's it Just took the end back off, that's how it looks. So I want to stick it in the spindle now with a bit of blue on it just to see what sort of contact we get. Okay, I'm going to put a bit of bearing blue up the spindle. Got more on me than anywhere. <laughs> Okay, take it out and see what sort of impression we got. Stuck in there. Must definitely get in contact, but I guess that's going to have to do. Get in contact, probably a touch heavier at the front here, but it is still getting contact at the back. Certainly not going to make it again. I think that's good enough. Not the inside of this spindle is not brand new either. But overall, first job on this mill, it's not too bad. I believe, I honestly believe there's trouble with them spindle bearings. Probably out to the mile. Point oh one. I reckon that's almost good enough. But I reckon that's a pretty good result. Considering I am not overly keen on trying it until I find out more about these spindle bearings. They got me a bit concerned, to be honest. Probably disappointing for a lot of people, but it is what it is. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Not really impressed I went too deep with these smaller drive dogs, but hey, it is what it is. I'm not prepared to try it until I find out for sure whether these spindle bearings are okay or not. So until I find out some more information on how to get the spindle out without doing any damage, then I'll, yeah, I'll do that and then sort it out. And if it's if it's good it's good if it's if it's not well i have to put new bearings in it but i got a funny feeling it's going to need new bearings anyway that's the way it is so pretty happy the run out too with 0 0.01 run out that that's pretty good anyway i hope you guys enjoyed that and i hope you liked the new mill it's certainly gone back to bare bones using dial indicators and hand wheels again after I'm so used to using a DRO on the Cincinnati but yeah over time I'll get it set up the way I want it um, first thing I'm going to get is another VFD for that Cincinnati so I can get it back going again and then I'll worry about putting the extras on this over the next 12 months anyway thanks for watching guys see you later Hooroo.